For a look at what's ahead on this last trading day of the week, let's bring in Lisa Erickson, head of traditional investments group at U.S. Bank, and Greg Branch is managing partner at Veritas Financial. It's good to see both of you this morning. Welcome. Uh, Lisa, what do you think about where we are right now? Are we closer to the top, do you think, or do we have some room to go? Well, we're still moderately optimistic on U.S. equities, and really the reason why is if you look at what's going on from a macroeconomic standpoint, as well as with corporate earnings, we really still have very positive trend and momentum. We see most of our economic indicators with very good numbers and, again, continued um, momentum in them. And certainly, second quarter earnings season was very robust. So that sets the potential foundation for some nice numbers through the end of the year. I do say moderately, however, because we do recognize that there's some risk and tests coming up in the second half where inflation may go and also just higher base comparisons from last year that really make it harder for growth to be. But overall, we're advocating for clients to stay in that U.S. equity position. Greg, it seems to me that you're pretty worried about inflation. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's a fair characterization. And uh, more than just inflation, I think that we're going to uh, see an opportunity to pick up some assets uh, cheaper than we are now on the other side of Jackson Hole. Uh, the last remaining defense of its posture that the Fed has used is concern over what the Delta variant would do to the labor market. But the jobless claims numbers over the last two weeks kind of dismissed that narrative. We've seen pandemic low numbers the last two weeks. Only in June and July have we seen a couple of prints that's less than that. And so we've demonstrated that the Delta variant isn't causing any deterioration in the labor market. And quite the opposite, we have 10 million job openings. That's a record. We have a million more openings than we have people who are looking for work or uh, underemployed. And so the Fed's position that we need to keep the foot on the gas with monetary stimulus, I think has been all but dismissed at this point. And I think that you'll see them start to change posture at Jackson Hole. Yeah, the, the market doesn't seem too concerned about that, though, Greg, right? I mean, yes, inflation reads have ticked up. Some of the things you said, there's the Fed speak's been more hawkish this week. But listen, right. just said coming into this segment, we've hit record highs like each of the last three days. So the market doesn't seem to care about what you're worried about. That's fair. And, and, and remember, I also believe that we'll see a tremendous third quarter. Uh, you know, we had 85 percent of companies beat in the second quarter. And I think we'll see something of the same in the third quarter. But in the meantime, from here to there, I'll point you to different data in the market. The 10-year yield has gone from uh, 1.15 on August 2nd, a low we hadn't seen since about February, to now around 1.36. So I think that the fixed income market is starting to anticipate that there's really no last leg for the Fed to stand on in terms of defending its posture on monetary stimulus at this point. So I do expect uh, them to start to articulate a change in posture. All right. So what, let's assume, Lisa, that happens. Later this month, Fed chair goes to Jackson Hole. He says what he does. He makes you think that the taper's coming sooner rather than later. The September meeting maybe puts that into play, and then October they start to taper. What does that mean for the market? Do we get all upset, or can we handle it? Well, our base case really remains that what we're going to see is uh, some announcements later in the year with the beginning of tapering again near the end of the year and into early next year. But I think you certainly raise a good point that if there is expectations pulled forward that the Fed may uh, really pull back on the gas pedal sooner than we expect, I do think that's going to affect markets. Certainly, markets have been dependent in recent years on, again, very accommodative stance, and any near-term pullback could affect and cause some vol volatility. So, Greg, I'm thinking if I believe what you say, that I want to be in the banks, and I'm a little weary of tech. I mean, if rates are going to go up, I wonder what tech right. is going to do. And then if rates go up, the bank trade, which has worked, is going to keep working. Right. Yeah, I think the bank trade will continue to work. Um, what we saw is a multiple revision performance story. Uh, the multiples were crazy uh, a year ago, right? Trading Some of them trading less than tangible book. Uh, so that's no longer the trade. The trade is now earnings growth. There's an earnings growth story there. Uh, particularly with a uh, more favorable net interest margin environment uh, with rates coming up. Uh, tech, I believe, will be a pause. I, I'm not necessarily uh, pessimistic on tech because, at, 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 on the one hand, while you will have uh, rates providing a headwind, on the other, the performance has just been spectacular. The narrative that what we saw over the last year was COVID pull through or COVID induced bumped 
has been sum summarily dismissed. And so, you know, we see, we're in the midst of an IT spending cycle, a hardware cycle with tremendous backlog. Uh, we're in the midst of a cloud, transition to cloud cycle, seeing 50 percent growth in those businesses. So I think you have real secular tailwinds behind some of those uh, tech stores. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.